is uh, is the peace movement and uh, fortunately we have uh, surveillance in Canada and uh, we have had the RCMP keeping track of everything the peace movement did at that time because as far as they were concerned the peace movement was uh, part of the communist movement and if you're a peace worker you would be called a dirty communist and people uh, uh, although they uh, we had huge demonstrations right at the end of the war but of course with this pressure on people to separate themselves uh, from anyone who is an activist it fell up down quite a lot but I want to tell you we started out in 1949 uh, with what we call the, the Stockholm appeal basically to ban nuclear weapons and to ban and to slowly get rid of military now that petition circulated the world and we all worked very very hard so in the end 655 million people around the world signed that petition and uh, the BC Peace Council in British Columbia uh, members collected uh, uh, 50,000 over 50,000 signatures and remember then uh, we were about just a little more than half the population of today so it was a tremendous effort uh, so that showed that in spite of all the, the fear uh, you know and the communist propaganda people did sign the petition now I was on the street we, we oh, every weekend and, and sometime between and people would be shy about signing but they would sign it's quite amazing because they were also afraid of war and the type of weapons that were being used. Uh, here uh, is a, the, the police kept good notes. Here's a, uh, the fourth peace worker collects a thousand names. They actually <laughs> kept track of who, who collected them. At that time, uh, Dr. James Endicott, who was a, a United Church minister, uh, became one of the leaders, and he was the leader in Canada of the uh, of the peace movement. He actually uh, had been in China uh, prior to the war and he had, uh, he actually worked for the China and Kashyyyk government and he got disillusioned too at the time of the revolution there and, uh, and decided that it wasn't right. So there were many, many peace forms signed. And I remember going to Moscow with a group uh, of peace workers to discuss with the people in in um, the in uh, the Soviet Union at the time, and uh, it was quite a busy, exciting time, believe me. And uh, I remember having a film that came out of China on the revolution, and we had a group like this in a hall showing the film, and the RCAP and walked in and took the film. So we were well monitored and protected. Here we have a picture in the RCMP records of uh, Mil Mildred uh, McLeod, a great peace worker and social justice worker. Uh, Karen, uh, Claire Kine, a beautiful singer, uh, used to sing uh, at peace rallies for free, although she was a, pro yeah, a professional <laughs> singer. Uh, at that time, we even invited the mayor of Hiroshima to come, uh, of course, he he couldn't come, but he sent greetings. We had a, we had films on India at the time, and the RCM key kept track of that for us. So we have our history all in these pages. We had a peace bazaar, you see, and uh, um, <laughs> city audiences see unique Chinese film. The mayor of Hiroshima sends peace pledges to the BC group. And then there was a big campaign to recognize China where after the revolution because uh, the Chiang Kai-shek was represented on by, for China on the United Nations. So uh, we had a campaign to recognize China. So we have our history record right here in, in, in the RCMP files. All kinds of literature was put out on the, on the bomb. So people were well aware of the danger and in fact, if you go back into these records, you realize that they were very serious about using that bomb. And uh, 
so it was real to us to be uh, nervous, afraid, although those of us working the peace movement uh, were so preoccupied and so confident that we could win that we were not afraid and uh, we think we did win. We think it was the peace movement of the world that prevented that bomb being used, along of course with Athlee who didn't want <laughs> to see his country bombed to smithereens. So with that, I will bring it up to date because uh, what uh, people have sort of put it out of their mind that the, the, the nuclear threat is still with us and perhaps even more dangerous in a sense. And uh, because right now, uh, last uh, summer, at, uh, uh, there were the, the usual gathering at Nagasaki and uh, Hiroshima, and this time it was very big. And actually, uh, the US was represented with Hillary Clinton was there. <coughs> um, Obama gave a, a speech about it. And uh, there's a woman who wrote a report she sent to me, uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki out at 65, because 65 years. Um, Norimatsu Satoki was there at the demonstration. And uh, they have gathered statistics to date of people who have died from that <laughs> bomb, uh, ha uh, over half a million, even though the immediate deaths were uh, like uh, 270,000. Millions have died since, yes, over 600 million uh, from radiation pro poisoning, et sickness, etc. Now, so what? And they're very, very fearful. They, they are very concerned um, that the U.S. Um, give an apology and, you know, recognize publicly what they have done. But they didn't get it. They thought they would get the apology, but it didn't come. Okay, so what do we have to worry about today? The other day I got an email or I went through searching through the uh, internet and found a news report from the Guardian, the UK Guardian, uh, the nuclear bomb materials found for sale on Georgia black market. So what happens is uh, some people are getting uh, this plutonium from the plants, probably uh, energy plants, could be from the bombs plants because there's so much disruption and confusion since the Soviet Union broke up. Uh, there's no one really protecting, although the, there's international rules that are in place, but it seems they got this, and I understand it's been going on a while. They can carry this plutonium in cigarette case, or in this case, it's kind of plastic bags, and they're getting a good price for it in Europe, but they caught these these two or three people in this case, and uh, it is plutonium, and how why they can carry it around like that is because it's not radioactive as it is when it's still, you know, it has to have a trigger, and it's not quite uh, bomb grade. Uh, the plutonium has to be 95% uh, grade, whatever, and uh, this stuff they found was about 85, 90. But, you know, you think about that. Who's buying this? You know, there are many angry people in the world right now, angry at the United States, and uh, certainly they, there's no, uh, they say it for uh, scientists, it's quite easy to make bombs. It's not that difficult. So that's what we have to be concerned about. And the other thing, what they've done is, see, they, they take out of the uranium, they take what they call a, an element called 235. That goes into making bombs. It's split again, and there's plutonium and other elements. Uh, but what is left, they call um, waste, uranium waste. Now they have discovered that they can take that uranium waste, mix it with some other elements, and it makes the hardest metal. It's never, they can't find anything that equals it on Earth. And they've been using that um, in, they used it in Yugoslavia for sure. Uh, they've used it in Iraq. They're using it in uh, uh, Afghanistan. 
and it's radi the radiation from that, when it hits, it sends out sparks. And the sparks are traveling around the world, these radioactive sparks. They even measured, when they were bombing Yugoslavia, they measured in England, they have a, a way of measuring radiation because they produce um, the ra from the hydrogen uh, plants, you know, the nuclear plants. So they keep track of how much radiation is being circulated. The radiation went up about three or four times from the bombing in Yugoslavia. Now there's evidence um, that that plus uh, other d bombs like are creating mutations, and the doctors in Fallujah in uh, Iraq have told women not to have babies. They're all born deformed. Now, I got a, uh, pictures of babies from Afghanistan, all deformed, from a doctor there who was collecting evidence. So these things are going on, and so we call it depleted uranium, but it's still radioactive. Now. They make the bullets of that in, that they put in their guns. Canada produces those bullets. So we are also producing radioactive weapons in a sense. And people are not thinking about these things. The environmental think movement never mentions war. And we need to make that connection that, that um, that the, the uh, weapons, the military, is the worst polluter in the world. And someone in the States calculated how much oil the, the U.S. military, U.S. alone uses. It's far more oil than is produced in, in the oil sands. <coughs> so if they, if they brought their planes home off their 700 some odd bases around the world, we wouldn't need the oil sands. So this, these are the kind of things we need to talk to about together and connect the, the military and the war preparations with the environment because there can be no solution to the environment as long as we are threatening war.